Right, so a very good evening to all of you and I welcome you all to this particular session on image-based questions related to your neurology, right? So I have been doing this particular image-based sessions on the Arise Medical Academy platform since past 10 or 15 days. And those students who did not watch the image-based sessions of the previous topics, please go through them. All of those sessions are very much useful to your upcoming FMG exam. Please try to utilize these free sessions which we are doing for the sake of you. And because in your FMG exams, the images have been asked very frequently. There are nearly around 70 to 80 images which will be asked in your FMG exam. So taking those all points into consideration, we at RIS Medical Academy are trying to see that the students should not feel any difficulty regarding the image-based questions. And particularly myself, Dr. Rajesh Bubba, I'm trying to take care of the images related to the general medicine. Okay, right. So with this brief introduction, let me just start the session. So you take the first question, <clears throat> maximum sensitivity of the clinical test shown in photograph is exhibited in shin, toes, finger pads, and then soles or sole, right sole of the foot. Okay, yeah. So any one of you, please answer this question. So first of all, you should be able to understand what exactly is the test which is being done. Right, very good, Savitri Devagan, Devangan. So the answer is over the finger pads. Now, can anyone tell me what is the test which is being done? The test which is being done here is the two-point discrimination. And if you take this two-point discrimination, please tell me what are the sensory tracts which will carry this two-point discrimination? Right, what are the sensory tracts? which will carry this two-point discrimination. Any one of you? So, the sensory tracts, very good Mohit, the sensory tracts which will carry the two-point discrimination is your dorsal columns. Right, which is nothing but your posterior columns. Okay. Uh, Mohamed, it is not spinothalamic tract. See, what does the spinothalamic tract carry? Spinothalamic tracts, they carry pain, temperature, and as well as the crude touch. Okay, so these are the sensations which are being carried by spinothalamic tracts. But whereas you take the two-point discrimination, two-point discrimination is being carried by your dorsal columns is being carried by your dorsal columns. And what are the other sensations which are carried by your dorsal columns? The other sensations which are being carried by your dorsal columns is the fine touch, right? The fine touch, then followed by that pressure, next, vibration sense, right? 
So, and even your two point discrimination. And the other important conscious proprioception. So, these are the sensations which are being carried by the dorsal columns. Whereas, spinothalamic tract, <coughs> it carries pain, temperature, and as well as the crude touch. Pain, temperature, and as well as crude touch. Now, the test which is shown to you is your two point discrimination. And the maximum sensitivity, right? The maximum sensitivity of this particular two point discrimination is seen over the finger pads, right? Now, how much is that? Right? How much is that? So, the normal minimal distance, it is around three centimeters for the hand or the foot, right? It is around three centimeters for the hand or foot. Whereas in the fingertips, it is 0.6 centimeters. That means what do you understand by this? The fingertips are able to make out the two point discrimination up to 0.6 centimeters. But whereas in the hand, it is around, or in the hand or foot, it is around three centimeters. So that is why you see the answer to this question. What is asked? Right, what is asked is maximum sensitivity. Right, maximum sensitivity of the clinical test shown in the photograph is exhibited in the finger pads. All right, now then followed by that. So that was the question related to your two point discrimination. Where do you have the maximum sensitivity? Now, let me discuss an image. So, this is the image over here. Very interesting image. What is the body shown in the photograph? Right? The body, whichever is shown in the photograph, is found in Alzheimer's disease, astrocytoma, Parkinsonism, Huntington's disease. Right. So, very good. Very good, Avinash. So, the answer here is, this is a Levi body, right? So this is your Levi body. So Avinash, please tell me, what does this Levi body contains? Yes, any one of you? Please tell me, what does this Levi body contains? The answer here is Parkinsonism, no doubt about it. But what is the protein which is present in the Levi body? Any one of you? Yes, very good Avinash, excellent. So the protein what you have is the alpha synuclein protein. Right, it is your alpha synuclein protein. So that is the protein which will be present in the Levi body and this particular Levi body, it is seen in patients with the Parkinsonism. Now, you take the inclusion bodies, right? If you take the inclusion bodies in other disorders, what are inclusion bodies actually? The inclusion bodies, these are the protein aggregates, right? These are the protein aggregates within the cytoplasm or within the nucleus. Right? These are the pro protein aggregates seen in either in the cytoplasm or the nucleus. And inclusion bodies of various disorders, if you see, right? Inclusion bodies of various disorders. Like, for example, you take the pig's disease. Pig's disease, the inclusion bodies are the pig's bodies itself. Parkinsonism, that is what I have just shown you, that is Levi body, which contain the alpha synuclein protein. And before that, what is your pig's disease? It is the dementia or it is your frontotemporal dementia seen in age group less than 60 years. Right? Seen in age group less than 60 years. 
okay that is your frontotemporal dementia or pigs disease and you take the alzheimers disease in alzheimers you have what is called the hirano bodies and this particular alzheimers this is also dementia but this is the dementia seen in elderly individuals more than 60 years right which is a neurodegenerative disorder okay then followed by that you take amyotrophic lateral sclerosis so what is your amyotrophic lateral sclerosis amyotrophic lateral sclerosis it is a type of motor neuron disease right it is a type of motor neuron disease and in this amyotrophic lateral sclerosis there is involvement of both upper motor neuron and as well as the lower motor neuron right there is involvement of both upper motor neuron and as well as the lower motor neuron right and the inclusion bodies are the bunina bodies and you take in case of the progressive myoclonic epilepsy right progressive myoclonic epilepsy it is seen in the juvenile age group that is around 15 to 20 years and in this juvenile myoclonic epilepsy drug of choice is valproic acid right drug of choice is <coughs> valproic acid so in progressive myoclonic epilepsy what is the inclusion bodies that is your lafora bodies lafora bodies are the inclusion bodies in progressive myoclonic epilepsy and even within the normal brain tissue also you can have these inclusion bodies and that is called marinesco bodies but in the image whichever is shown to you right in the image whichever is shown to you the inclusion body it is nothing but your levi body right it is your levi body okay right now your parkinsonism why is that due to that is due to decrease in your dopamine levels or increase in the acetylcholine levels right and parkinsonism is also the disorder which is seen in the elderly individuals next now let me move on to the next image yeah this is another very interesting question and let me see how many of you can answer this antibodies to the channel shown in the photograph is seen in antibodies to channel shown in the photograph is seen in dermatomyositis myasthenia gravis polymyositis lambert eater myasthenic syndrome right very good very good so the answer is lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome see lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome can anyone tell me what is the drug of choice for lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome so this lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome it is a neuromuscular junction disorder <clears throat> right it is a neuromuscular junction disorder and here the antibody and it's a presynaptic right it is a presynaptic junction disorder right it is a presynaptic junction disorder and it is also an autoimmune disease right this is also an autoimmune disease that means the antibodies are formed antibodies they are formed against the calcium channels right the antibodies are formed against the calcium channels now because the antibodies are being formed against the calcium channels the calcium will not enter into the presynaptic neuron right the calcium will not enter into the presynaptic neuron so when the calcium does not enter into presynaptic neuron what will be the problem in patients with the lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome 
the problem is that there will be decreased release of acetylcholine right there will be decreased release of the acetylcholine right now the point that you need to know is decreased release of acetylcholine right decreased release of acetylcholine that will reduce the neuromuscular transmission right that will reduce the neuromuscular transmission okay and what is the drug of choice in case of lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome drug of choice for lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome is 34 diaminopyrimidine right 34 diaminopyrimidine that is what is your lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome okay so lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome it's an autoimmune disease the antibodies are formed against the calcium channels which are present on the presynaptic nerve terminals and lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome there is decreased release of the acetylcholine and the drug of choice for lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome is 34 diaminopyrimidine right now apart from that you take the other disorders hmm? you take other disorders whichever are given in your options all other disorders they are your autoimmune disorders only right like for example you take the myasthenia gravis right you take myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis it is also an autoimmune disorder the antibodies they are formed against the postsynaptic nerve terminal right so the antibodies they are formed against the postsynaptic nerve terminal here and in these patients with the myasthenia gravis acetylcholine is present in the adequate levels in the synapse hmm? acetylcholine is present in the adequate levels in the synapse okay and here the antibodies are formed against nicotinic receptors nm receptors which are present in the postsynaptic nerve terminals right nicotinic receptors okay that is what you will see in myasthenia gravis and what is the drug of choice for myasthenia gravis it all depends upon the severity of your myasthenia in case of mild to moderate cases we give physostigmine right we give physostigmine and in case of moderate to severe cases we give steroids right moderate to severe cases we give steroids okay whereas mild to moderate we give both physostigmine and as well as the neostigmine but physostigmine is like more preferred than compared to that of your neostigmine okay right so this is about the myasthenia gravis which is also an autoimmune disorder and you take the other options Hmm? you take the other options that is polymyositis and as well as dermatomyositis your polymyositis and dermatomyositis that is also an autoimmune disorder right polymyositis and as well as dermatomyositis that is also an autoimmune disorder now please tell me what are the antibodies in case of this polymyositis and dermatomyositis any one of you in polymyositis what are the antibodies so the antibodies like what you will see in case of the polymyositis is right very good dr dipin so it is your anti jo1 right anti jo1 okay but the question that you need to understand here is what are the differences between dermatomyositis and polymyositis let me tell you in polymyositis there is only proximal muscle weakness right there is only proximal muscle weakness yeah you have these two antibodies in in uh, yes dr devin in 
polymyositis you will you will not only have the anti jovan antibodies which are formed against the muscle even you have anti histidine antibodies also right and in polymyositis there is only proximal muscle weakness but whereas you take in dermatomyositis in dermatomyositis it is also an autoimmune disease right and here there will be dermatological manifestations right there will be dermatological manifestations and there will be also proximal muscle weakness that is what is the difference between the dermatomyositis and as well as the polymyositis right yeah and you have many dermatological manifestations and these particular dermatological manifestations include the shawl sign and then heliotrop rash multiple dermatological manifestations can be seen in these patients with the dermatomyositis right so this is about an image based question related to your lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome okay next yeah yes this is another very interesting question and let me see how many of you can answer this see this is the arrow right pointing towards a tract hmm? this is an arrow pointing towards a tract the question is not seen in lesion of the neuron shown in the photograph right not seen in lesion of neuron shown in the photograph hypotonia spasticity weakness of the muscle superficial reflex is absent right so can anyone tell me what is the structure the lesion suggests you of very good so this this particular structure it is nothing but your corticospinal tract so corticospinal tract remember this is an upper motor neuron hmm? this is an upper motor neuron so in upper motor neuron lesion what is the tone you will have there will be hypertonia right there will be hypertonia now this particular hypertonia can be in two forms either it can be spasticity or it could be rigidity right either it is spasticity or rigidity you take spasticity you will see that in pyramidal tract lesion right pyramidal tract lesion and you take rigidity it is seen in extra pyramidal tract lesions right seen in the extra pyramidal tract lesions okay now when there is involvement of your upper motor neuron you will not have hypotonia hypotonia yeah uh, yes bipin and the other important difference spasticity is your pyramidal tract involvement rigidity is your extra pyramidal tract involvement and the other difference is spasticity is velocity dependent that means when you increase the velocity of passive movement of the joint right when you increase the velocity of the passive movement of the joint the spasticity increases whereas rigidity if you take it is velocity independent right it is your velocity independent so that is what is the difference between the spasticity and as well as the rigidity right yes dr dipin is the clear for you then followed by that spasticity it is your upper motor neuron lesion sign or umn sign right weakness of the muscle is also the feature that can be seen in upper motor neuron sign superficial reflexes being absent that is also an upper motor neuron sign but there is hypotonia it is lower motor neuron sign 
right it is a lower motor neuron sign okay yeah dr bipin that is what i have said you know velocity dependent means what like for example i just show you here right you take this is my okay this is my the elbow joint right now for examining the tone what i will do right so i will be doing the passive flexion of my elbow hmm? i will be doing the passive flexion of my elbow that is to examine the tone like for example if i am suspecting if i want to differentiate that hypertonia between spasticity and rigidity what i will do like i will just increase the velocity of the movement right i will increase the velocity of the movement when i increase the velocity of the movement if the tone is further increasing that is called the spasticity that is called velocity dependent right whereas rigidity there may be hypertonia but even though i am increasing the velocity of the movement of the joint the tone will not increase that is called velocity independent okay so that is what is the difference between spasticity and as well as rigidity yes dr bipin kumar is that clear right and the hypotonia it is a feature of lower motor neuron sign okay and to summarize the differences between the upper motor neuron and as well as the lower motor neuron lesion signs let me just summarize here so the tone if you see there will be hypertonia and the tone if you see in the lower motor neuron lesion there will be hypotonia right there will be hypotonia and you take the deep tendon reflexes in upper motor neuron lesion they will be exaggerated they will have brisk reflexes and the deep tendon reflexes here they are absent in lower motor neuron lesion okay then followed by that in case of the upper motor neuron lesion you will have upgoing plantars right whereas in lower motor neuron lesion there will be normal plantar response that is flexor response right next the other difference is in upper motor neuron lesion the superficial reflexes will be absent whereas in lower motor neuron lesion the superficial reflexes that will be present right that will be present and in case of upper motor neuron lesion sign upper motor neuron lesion there will be disuse atrophy and in lower motor neuron lesion there will be severe or gross atrophy of the muscles hmm? gross atrophy of the muscles and in upper motor neuron lesion there will be no involuntary movements whereas in lower motor neuron lesion there will be presence of involuntary movements right there will be presence of involuntary movements and that involuntary movements that includes fasciculations right that involuntary movements include the fasciculations okay so these are the differences between the upper motor neuron and as well as the lower motor neuron lesion and muscle weakness if you see it is present in both it is present in both okay so going back to the image here the image it is pointing towards the upper motor neuron right and what is this upper motor neuron it is nothing but your corticospinal tract sir why are you telling it as a corticospinal tract but you see here the tract is crossing exactly at the level of the middle oblongata it is crossing to the opposite side right so pyramidal tract or your corticospinal tract it will cross to the opposite side so that is the reason why i am calling it as the pyramidal tract or corticospinal tract 
and you have many other descending tracts apart from corticospinal tracts you have many other descending tracts what are the other descending tracts can anyone tell me what are the names of the other descending tracts apart from corticospinal tracts so the names of the other descending tracts are the rubrospinal tectospinal vestibulospinal these are also the other descending tracts or the motor tracts okay right so these are some of the image based questions related to your neurology some more sessions i will definitely do right this is not the end of the image based questions to related to neurology every day i will discuss the images related to neurology minimum i will do four to five sessions related to images on neurology so neurology is a very very important topic in the general medicine where the images high yield images will definitely be asked in your fmg exam right so until then good night and see you again in the upcoming sessions right thank you very much for attending the session